Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Christine Ruzak. I am one of the coaches in the Career Development Office here at Yale SOM. We're thrilled to have you today for the consulting panel. Um, I would like to give a quick overview on the CDO's offering and then we'll go ahead and talk with our panelists um, who are, we're so thrilled were able to join us today about their experiences in their consulting um, recruiting process while um, here at SOM. Um, the CDO office is, um, actually uh, has two silos. We have one that is focused on the coaches and one that is focused on the employer partners. Um, the employer partners will focus on bringing in um, opportunities from different firms uh, to SOM, so it, everything from job postings to company presentations um, and building those relationships and working with alumni. Um, whereas the coaches, um, I work one-on-one -on -one with students um, on their career paths, uh, anything from exploration to job offer negotiation and how to be successful in your first 60 days. Um, and this is a great pleasure that I, um, I get to work with these guys. So I'm going to have each one of them introduce themselves uh, and talk a little bit about their, uh, their story. And we'll start with Andrew. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, hi, guys. I'm Andrew Rosso. Um, I grew up in the Chicago suburbs, um, and I went to school in Maine studying uh, East Asian studies and literature. The East Asian studies set me up for my first role with American Express in Hong Kong. I spent two years there working on China strategy. Um, two years later, I wanted to flex different muscles. I've transitioned to New York, working in operations as a chief of staff. And I decided to come back to SOM, uh, sort of to learn the business stuff I didn't study during undergrad. I interned at McKinsey uh, in New York City while I was here. I'll be going back there full time. Um, so that's me. Hi, I'm Nick. Uh, grew up in Massachusetts, went to college in Ohio, graduated with a degree in management economics. I turned that into a career in corporate finance, first in oil and gas and then healthcare. Uh, that spanned both the US and Canada. Not as fun as China, but I tried one other country. Um, after about five or six years in corporate finance, I decided I wanted to do a bit of a uh, career pivot, which is what led me to come to business school. Spent my summer with Bain & Company in Boston, and I will be returning there full time. Hi everyone, I'm Shruti. I also grew up outside of Massachusetts or outside of Boston. Um, went to Boston College and majored in finance and marketing. Started my career at Citi um, in a treasury role and then pivoted to healthcare tech um, from an interest, from a volunteer interest, um, and came back to school. I'm in the dual program here with the School of Public Health because I wanted to further explore the intersection of business and healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, this summer, interned at Deloitte in Boston, and we'll be going back um, to Deloitte in New York. Great, thank you. Um, so I'd like uh, maybe Nick can give us an overview about what the consulting industry looks like here at S from an SOM perspective. Certainly, yeah. So quite a few consulting firms recruit fairly heavily here at the uh, School of Management at Yale. Um, this spans everything from what you might think of as like the big strategy firms, Bain, BCG, and McKinsey, um, including the big four, EY, Deloitte, etc. Um, there's also more uh, niche-focused firms, mm -hmm. such as those in healthcare, you know, Chartist Group, ZS, etc. Um, and then, of course, the small, uh, the small boutique firms. Um, Firms will put on a wide variety of events for the students here at school. It starts about three weeks into, um, into the first year, uh, and it'll be everything from like a large corporate presentation through small one-on-one -on -one or one-on-three coffee chats where you can get to chat with a consultant on a bit more of a personal level. Mm. That's pretty decent overview. Yeah, I think it's a great overview. Great. Yep. So um, tell us a little bit more about the consulting club and how that played a role in, I guess it would be great to hear from each of you, maybe in different elements of the club and how that helped you be successful in your path. Sure thing, yeah. I can go ahead and start on this one as well. Uh, so full disclosure, we're all leaders of the, the uh, consulting club here at uh, SOM. So um, we all think it's wonderful uh, and certainly many of our fellow students do as well. Uh, one of the main offerings that the consulting club provides is a robust 13-week uh, curriculum where we have one-hour meetings each week to talk through the various aspects of the case interview process, the fit or behavioral interview process, and then tips and strategies around networking with the various firms in order to get jobs. We have a few other uh, aspects that I think Andrew and Shruti can talk about. Yeah. yeah, sure. I think for me, one of the most helpful, helpful aspects of um, you know, the consulting club during my recruiting process was a case team. So a case team is where 
five, six uh, first year students who are interested in consulting are paired up with a second year mm -hmm. who navigated the process successfully the prior year. And what that, it creates kind of like a small group community that is dedicated to practicing together and learning how to case together, most specifically. So I think my team um, was paired up based on your dedication level. And we said we were like all in on consulting. And then we ended up, you know, just slotting times to case with each other, like almost ad nauseum, like throughout the weeks. Um, so you get a lot of practice with each other. And then you get the second year to come help you show you what best in class casing might look like. So you can kind of improve and hone your skills. I think that's kind of like the curriculum side of the case team. Um, on a personal front, I ended up like becoming great friends with every one of my case team. I think these are folks who really supported me throughout the process, gave me confidence and courage. And I think I'm going to stay friends with them for, you know, probably the rest of my life. So it's a huge part of my SOM experience. Yeah, and I would say outside of the curriculum and the case teams, a huge aspect of what Consulting Club offered was small group deep dive sessions. So there were certain aspects of the casing process that I struggled with. So it was really nice to have one on six um, opportunities to practice that with second years and people who had done consulting for quite a while. Um, and then, of course, there's also the community building um, aspect of consulting clubs. So that's something else that we're trying to um, bring and do more of this year, just getting first years and second years to hang out together, um, take, talk about the stress level of this recruiting process, and also um, help cope with that. Um, so that's been, that's been fun. Outside of maybe the consulting club, maybe there's a class, a professor, or a conference you guys attended. Is there anything that you'd like to share that was helpful in um, helping you navigate this process? Yeah, sure, I can start. That Go for it, yeah. So uh, personally, I think the first resource I took advantage of was actually the CDO. Uh, I think they helped me a lot with my resume even before I got to campus. There's a beautiful Yale template that you'll fill out. Um, and then after that, I got paired with a career advisor who went through you know, my resume with like very, very fine lens uh, and pointed out all these uh, small things I should tweak. Uh, and then the next big thing they helped me with was just rehearsing, uh, well, first, I guess, like creating my own story and then kind of like rehearsing it and fine tuning it so that when I showed up to recruiting events with consulting firms, I felt prepared. I felt like I confident and, and ready to go and kind of talk about my key strengths and interests. Yeah, so I would, I would add on that the classes that we offer here um, also do a wonderful job preparing students for consulting interviews, specifically the quarter leading right into the January uh, interview season covers topics from marketing and customer, uh, finance and sourcing and managing funds and investor, uh, and then um, economics and a bit of game theory in competitor, all of which tend to come up fairly frequently in consulting um, interviews. And so I think working through all of that coursework, thinking about problems in a structured, logical way, really helped build all of the skills and the terms that are really useful in terms of uh, success. Yeah, and I just want to go back to Andrew's point about um, CDOs, help or resources that I utilized last, last year. Um, so CDO has this mock interview um, sessions that they host, and that was really helpful to practice your behavioral questions and just get feedback from mm -hmm. a third party that isn't your friends to give you um, real <laughs> um, feedback that you can improve upon. So that was really helpful for me in the recruiting process. Mm. I think one of the things we, we didn't mention, which was probably the most crucial for me, was just the help from the second years um, on campus mm -hmm. and then the actual alumni network at mm -hmm. the firms themselves. So second years dedicate a significant amount of their time to chatting with folks so they can learn about the consulting firms, how they operate, what it's like to work there in a daily life, um, and also like the differences between offices and things like mm -hmm. that. And then they also volunteer, volunteer their time to case you, so you actually get practice doing some of these interviews. Mm -hmm. And then the alumni network, um, in my opinion, was like just super tight knit. So specifically at McKinsey, I think like 50 alumni showed up for our presentation and then have just been like super helpful in terms of staying in touch with me throughout the recruiting process. It definitely couldn't have, uh, you know, gotten through the whole process without their help. Mm. So um, how do you think that recruiting, uh, consulting recruiting is unique at SOM based, um, in comparison to another, um, another school? So I would say the biggest theme here is the incredibly collaborative nature of the student body, mm -hmm. um, which manifests itself in formal ways, like through the uh, consulting club, um, which I would posit is easily one of the most structured and robust clubs of any uh, of any top business school. 
Um, but then also in more informal ways, sort of like to what Andrew was talking about mm -hmm. earlier of like you run into someone in the hallway and you have a quick question for them about what they thought about at this stage in the networking process or how they worded such and such in their resume mm -hmm. or their cover letter. And students are just so willing to give tips and advice to mm -hmm. our fellow students. Um, I think that that theme really um, uh, shows through like every aspect of the recruitment process here. Yeah. I feel like that's the same with alumni. I hear students oh, who come absolutely. in and meet me and they're like, oh, I just wrote this alumni and they wrote me right back. And I mean, it, I think that that community is, is quite strong. Um, if, if for, for those of you who maybe made a, a switch, right? Um, I think all of you made a bit yep. of a switch. Um, <laughs> can you tell me, um, and this is based on a question that came in from a student, you know, how, what was the challenge in, for you and how did you overcome that coming from not consulting? <laughs> so I think, I think uh, one of the biggest challenges is trying to figure out how to translate what I had done before school into what would make me a good consultant after school. Um, and those types of uh, tips around how to tell your story, how to frame the projects that you've worked mm. on, the skills that you've built, um, knowing how to do that, I think is A, something that's very important for success, but B, something that, the, that we do a great job at preparing students to be able to do both through the club and CDO. I would also say just for me, just getting the confidence that the stuff that I had done before would translate to consulting. So frankly, I wasn't sure like what consultants do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it really helped me to talk to second years who would talk to me about my prior experiences and say like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I did as a consultant uh, at this company. So the stuff that you're doing before is totally translatable. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, I had a little bit of an industry shift before coming to SOM. So I think a lot of what Nick was saying about this story was really what I thought a lot about from switching from finance to healthcare tech and then from healthcare tech to going back to school and then now doing healthcare consulting. I think it really comes down to why this makes sense for you right now and leveraging and like talking to second years and alumni helps um, helps you get to that story that's authentic to you. Did you have a clear vision that you wanted to do uh, consulting recruiting when you were applying for Yale? Yeah, I think that was definitely... I. Applying for business school definitely was a lot of soul searching. Um, and I think I thought about a lot of what where I wanted to be after the two-year investment. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, healthcare consulting made sense because there was so much within the healthcare space I wanted to explore, and it seemed like the best way for me to do that. And I think I came to that, too, from talking to current students um, at the schools I was looking at, as well as um, friends who were already in the field. Mm -hmm. I fell on the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, when I applied to business school, I didn't know what consulting was. Uh, and it wasn't until I started here and heard about it from my fellow students that I thought, wow, that would be a really neat job. I'd like to, to, uh, to give that a shot. Um, so it's certainly possible to recruit into it, whether you're thinking about it at this stage or if you're uh, fully committed. Yeah, I feel like I'm actually like the poster child for success for like SOM Consulting Club because I interviewed with uh, McKinsey and BCG right out of undergrad and like didn't know what a case was and kind of got like laughed out of the room. <laughs> so I came here knowing that I wanted to do consulting. I actually really enjoyed the interviews even though I had no clue what was happening. Um, and uh, I think I came in here knowing exactly what I wanted to do. And I think it just helped me be, you know, really specific with how I want to focus my time and ended up like, you know, working out for me. So. So what made you choose SOM at the end of the day? Yeah, so for me, I think the first thing was honestly exactly what we were just talking about. I knew I wanted to do consulting. I looked at SOM and said, will that help me get into a consulting mm -hmm. firm? At the time that I applied, about 35, 36% of folks were going into consulting. Um, so I thought, you know, I want to be part of that cohort. And it looks like they're helping other folks. Why not me? Um, I think the mm -hmm. second thing is that, you know, the community was just amazing and phenomenal. I learned that when I came up here to visit. I reached out to folks who made time to chat with me while I was here. I knew that they were going to be collaborative and help me along my recruiting journey. Um, and then the last thing for me was just personally, like, the location was great. I wanted to be close to New York. That's where my fiancé is, and it's like a two-hour train right away. So. so you certainly hit on a couple of the big ones for me, too. The, the student community mm -hmm. and the lo in the location were both pretty high on, on my list. But a few mm -hmm. other things that I considered that were fairly important um, were the level of access that we have to the broader Yale community. 
Um, whether that be like the resources of the school, things like we can use the libraries and meeting rooms and all those facilities, but also just being able to meet other students through like cross school clubs uh, and things of that nature. And then the second piece that I found really attractive was the focus on the and society portion. Um, I felt like a lot of business schools will teach ethics, um, but it's like a course as part of their core. Whereas we work really hard to weave the, the social impacts of various business decisions into the classes, the clubs, the general ethos of uh, SOM. Yeah, I totally agree. I think when I was looking at schools, the mission of SOM really stood out um, from the beginning. And then another priority for me was uh, the dual program. And SOM, mm. I believe, has the highest number of duals um, in, in any other business school. So that was really exciting for me. And that kind of ties to the whole integrated um, and one Yale component, too. So I was excited for, for those reasons and also leveraging the resources like having a hospital where you could do a practicum as a class was exciting. So I felt like those were opportunities that were unique to Yale. So I have some more um, questions from our audience, which um, I think would help us deep, dive a little bit deeper from where we've been. Uh, uh, one student is, at, or one potential student is asking about um, the Yale uh, Consulting Club uh, curriculum. Mm -hmm. And if you could sort of give a little bit more of an example of what that looks like. <clears throat> Yeah, certainly. So to prepare um, yourself for an internship, specifically. Right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, there's 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 two main interview types that you have to go through in order to get a consulting job. There's what's commonly called a fit interview um, or a behavioral interview, and then there's also a case interview. Um, the case interview can be broken down into a number of different components, starting from a framework and working all the way through the meat of the actual case, brainstorming, understanding charts and data, and turning all of what you learn into a crisp, uh, polished recommendation at the end for what, uh, for what the client should do in this particular business scenario. So our 13-week curriculum addresses every aspect of both the case interview as well as the fit or behavioral interview. Um, so we'll we'll spend each week focused on one particular session. So for instance, I had mentioned frameworks. We spend one, one hour of one week just solely talking about frameworks, how to make them, how to make them better, the types of things that you should think about um, when you're actually writing out your thoughts um, in the case interview. Um, I can certainly go into more detail, but I think that that's probably a good. Yeah, I think that's a great overview. Great. If somebody has any deeper um, it, questions, they can certainly ask. But for instance, last night's maybe even uh, program. So for the hour that we were together with the yes. consulting club and all the, um, and, uh, the first years and the leaders, can you maybe talk about what the curriculum was for that particular day or that particular session? Definitely. Um, so there were two main things that we talked about last night. Um, the first one was uh, a bit about the stress and the overall recruitment process. Um, consulting recruiting is it's very intense. It's going to take up a lot of your time, and sometimes it feels like all of your peers are doing all of these great things. They're you know having a wonderful coffee chat. They just had a great case, and you're just dealing with a lot of stress, uh, but which is, that's totally normal. Um, so we spent a bit of time talking through stress management tips as well as the various faux pas we've made throughout <laughs> our own processes last year. Um, and then the second part, we talked about what we call casing 2.0, uh, which is really how you bring deeper business insights or other outside knowledge into the actual case interview, which can really impress the consultants that you're um, interviewing with. Um, with the demands of on-campus networking for consulting, um, is it difficult to balance studies and global studies specifically? So IE or Global Network Week? So for the global studies, for me, it wasn't difficult at all because I did an IE, an International Exchange Program, mm -hmm. I think. And I think that's, you know, like a, a week, week and a half program where it's essentially like almost built into the, the curriculum where you've got time just to focus on that trip. So I went to the Balkans, we went to three different countries, learned about the history, the politics, businesses, cool. and it was, it was the only thing I was focused on for that week. So it was not, um, it didn't detract from anything else I was doing at all. Yeah, I will say first, the fall semester, um, first year is an exercise in time management. So it is helpful to come in and have sort of a priority list and where you wanna focus your energy. Um, for me, since I knew that I was gonna do consulting recruiting, that was top of list. Um, 
classes probably fell like third on that list. Um, so I think just having a general idea of where you want to allocate um, recruiting versus extracurriculars, social, mm -hmm. and classes um, is helpful. Um, obviously, you don't have to have it all figured out before you come on campus, but you're not going to have enough time to do everything 100%. And I think mm -hmm. part of going through first semester is being comfortable with that. I would also add that there's a lot of resources to help with with time management, um, both like informally from students, but also our academic affairs and student life office will put on like, you know, speaker talks of like, how did someone manage their time or best practices around thinking through like how to deal with group work if you're also recruiting for, for consulting or banking or one of the other very highly structured industries. Yeah, I think that last point is actually really important. Like a lot of the a lot of the ways that I managed my own competing time priorities was by just being frank and open with my team. I think it speaks to the collaborative nature of the students here, but I would say like, hey guys, you know, I'm doing consulting recruiting. I'm really busy right now. Uh, maybe I'm gonna contribute a little bit less to this group project. And then once I'm done and you guys are busy, I will start, you know, contributing more. And my team was super open to that and really helpful. So how difficult, um, from the students that you've worked with who are internationals, how difficult, um, or what's that process look like for them um, if they're interested in a consulting career? Yeah, so I think there's really two paths that international students tend to take. So they either are gonna recruit for a US office or they're gonna recruit for an office likely in their, in their home country or the, the country where they have most of the work experience. I'd say generally the path looks fairly similar doing either one of those. It's the same type of skills that they're gonna test for, um, the same tools that you need to, to succeed. Um, and then there's, there's certainly nuance between recruiting in the US versus recruiting internationally, whether it be cultural, work authorization, et cetera. Um, but there are a high number of students that have gone through both of those paths. And so mm -hmm. a wide variety of resources exist to help support that. Yep. Um, I didn't do that, so I can't really go into too much detail. I don't think it applies no. to any no. yeah. And I work with students who do that um, quite off, often. So I certainly have seen them, uh, students here, um, recruit internationally as well as maybe they have some um, oil and gas background and so they focus on the Houston office um, for one of the firms as well. Um, when you have your application you have you know UA um, locations of interest so you can put multiple locations um, and certainly have offers from full-time and have gone to uh, for full-time um, international offices so hopefully that clears up that question. Um, uh, there is a question about do all consultants start in sort of a general management role or are there opportunities to specialize right in as an intern or full-time at an MBA? I think this differs across the different consulting firms. So let me tell you about McKinsey because that's the only one I can really speak to. So for McKinsey, you can apply as a generalist where you will start on any project. It could be oil and gas, it could be in healthcare, it could be in private equity. Um, so that's one route, and you're kind of open to any project and any different function. You can also apply to a specific role and team. So you could apply to be on the digital team. You could apply to be on the corporate finance and strategy team, mm -hmm. the marketing and sales team, the operations or implementation team. So it's up to you. I would say even in the specific role, you might do generalist stuff. It's just going to be less frequently, maybe like 10% of your time as opposed to, you know, 80. Mm. Yeah. Was, Go ahead. No, no, please. <laughs> I was going to say, so within Deloitte strategy and operations practice, you, everyone comes in as a generalist, but if you have, for example, since I'm a dual student, um, it was kind of guaranteed or given that I would want to be on healthcare projects. And if that was true, or that's where um, I was aligned to this summer, and that's where I will be for full time. Um, doesn't mean that I have to stay in healthcare, but you do, they do um, take into consideration your preferences, especially if you're kind of tailoring your education towards one industry. Right. So yeah, I would just echo that the firms will fall on a spectrum from fairly generalist to pretty specialized. Um, Bain falls quite far on the, on the generalist side of the spectrum. Um, McKinsey and Deloitte, mm -hmm. it sounds like, are in the middle, but still there's quite a bit of a focus on, on being more generalist with opportunities to specialize. And then if you were to look at like a healthcare consulting firm or a really small, uh, a really small boutique firm, you might uh, encounter a bit more specialization. I would generally say like, if you want to specialize, if there's a type of work that you are really interested in doing, you're probably going to have the opportunity to do that at virtually any firm. Um, but if you're concerned about like, I'm going to be forced to specialize just because my background, so like for me, was in corporate finance, I didn't want to do finance type work, that's also generally not a concern. 
Mm. So what, why did you target the firms that you each targeted? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we talked a little bit about this. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So for me, um, well, I think, first of all, I think you need to think about the probability of getting into some of these firms and you kind of want to cast a wide net, if we're being honest, like they're pretty selective. And then the second thing is you want to evaluate your interactions with the firms as they are interacting with you and getting to know you. So for me, I actually really loved all of my chats with McKinsey folks. Um, I kind of had like a stereotype about them before I came to SOM that was completely untrue um, and just like love the people that I was meeting. I, I imagined that they were going to be super smart and sharp, but was not expecting them to be so friendly, personable and just like fun to hang out with. I would, I would agree with, with everything Andrew said. Um, I think generally speaking, there's your professional goals and there's also um, like fit and your personal goals. Uh, and I think both of those are important to consider. It's going to vary person to person how much you care about being in a specific industry or working for a specific firm versus the experience that you're going to have being at that firm. Um, I certainly fell further on the experience end. And so um, I just loved the folks that I met from Bain, very similar to Andrew with McKinsey, uh, which made my choice quite easy. Yeah, and similar for me, it was a lot of the fit aspect of it. Um, I had a chance to go to a women's conference that Deloitte hosted, which really gave me a deep dive into what it would be like to be at that firm, mm -hmm. um, which I loved. And then it was also really appealing that I had the opportunity, that I would have the opportunity to specialize within healthcare from the beginning. Um, so those were kind of my top reasons. So how important are GPA, GMAT, GRE scores? With the consulting firms? or With, with the consulting okay. firms and your applications. Not as important as you think. Um, it, it matters, but the internet will have you believe it matters a ton. Like it's 90% of whether you're going to get in. Um, our experience anecdotally has not been that. Um, there's certainly plenty of people with high GMAT scores that don't end up with even first round interview invites. And there's people with GMAT scores that fall well below the SOM median um, that ended up with more than one offer. So I wouldn't be too concerned about GRE, GPA, GMAT. Yeah. So in regard to sort of networking and the proximity um, that SOM, where SOM sits in comparison to, you know, in relation to New York and Boston, can you talk a little bit about how that played into your opportunities to connect uh, with uh, with firms and alumni? Yeah, uh, I can definitely start with that one. So I actually went down to New York a lot to do uh, recruiting type networking. Um, at one point, uh, uh, someone from BCG offered to do a case with me over the phone, and I was really excited about that. And I just kind of put it out there that I would also be willing to come down to New York. Mm -hmm. So he kind of took me up on it, and he invited me into the office. I went in and did like an actual case with him, which was super cool, uh, really helpful and nice of him. Also an alumni, which was great. And then I, I took advantage of it multiple times with McKinsey as well. Um, I would connect with someone on campus, and they would you know, invite me down to the office for like lunch or something like that. I think I did that on two occasions. Yeah, I had a similar experience um, with the with Boston office for some of these firms. Um, and so I had a chance to connect with some alumni when I was in Boston, as well as um, attend certain firms had some women's, um, women's Day events that would happen on like a Friday. So I was able to go down um, or go up for that. Um, so yeah, it's nice definitely being in the middle and access to both cities. I think the, the inverse is important too. It's uh, based on where we are, it's a lot easier for some of the firms just to send up reps out here and be on campus and be available for us. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that for sure. Um, so have you guys, has, has anybody taken any classes outside of SOM that maybe helped um, with this process or feel like will help you be a better consultant in the path that you've chosen? Definitely. So I don't know. across start, Yale, anywhere across Yale? <laughs> So I definitely have taken um, a bunch of public health classes, um, but in terms of what has been most helpful with um, the consulting process was, I mentioned that we part of our curriculum um, is to do a practicum, and I did this mini like externship last semester with the with the Yale New Haven Hospital. Um, so it wasn't necessarily for credit, but it was um, interesting because it was essentially like an internal. Um, process um, optimization type of uh, problem and very real problem that the hospital was trying to explore. So it kind of gave me a good taste of what my work would be like in healthcare consulting. 
So one of my favorite classes that I've taken here at Yale that also I expect to be quite useful in consulting was actually at the School of Forestry. Uh, it's a course called Renewable Energy Project Finance, where we work through um, both the legal and financial um, implications of putting together a wind farm uh, and how you could actually finance that, how you could build a financial model to support raising debt for that um, for that wind farm. And I think a lot of those technical skills are gonna be very useful in consulting, but also recognizing how those models that you build relate back to the actual question at hand and to the, um, to the actual industry that, that you're uh, working with are, are, are two really huge skills that I learned from that class. How much pressure are students under to consult um, on the industry they worked for pre-MBA? No, because you're a generalist, yeah, right? I haven't experienced any. Yeah. Um, yeah. I sort of return to what we said before, which is like if you are interested in specializing, generally speaking, you're going to have the opportunity to do so. Um, if you're concerned about being pigeonholed, it's 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 anecdotal, but I haven't heard of anyone of any SOM yeah. student being sort of forced into something just because mm -hmm. they did it beforehand. Mm -hmm. Maybe it would be useful to tell them how we got staff on the project. Sure. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So the way each firm uh, staffs people differently, the way it worked for me was I had just had a conversation with a professional development manager who's supposed to lead my development um, as a consultant. Mm. She talked to me about what my aspirations were in terms of which industries I wanted to explore, which functions I wanted to learn, and which different skill sets I wanted to pick up. And then essentially what she did is she matched kind of my goals with the firm's needs in terms of the projects that were available and the expertise that they needed on the project. And she prioritized my stuff usually and uh, got me on like a perfect project for me. And that's kind of like typically how staffing works uh, for us. Yeah, mine was almost exactly the same. Yeah, yeah ours is similar. Yeah. There's a question about if there is a gap on the number of students who can be selected each year for consulting, internships, and jobs. Um, I have not heard of any, but I'm wondering if you have a cap, a cap on the number of people selected in terms of headcount. Um, like how many they can select. I mean, it's going to depend on the firm's needs, right? Yeah. So, like, how many folks are they hiring that year? I guess. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I would agree. I don't, I don't really think there's much to worry about there. No. Yeah. Um, so, what support um, does Yale SOM offer to students who are interested in recruiting into offices outside of New York and New England? Quite a bit. Uh, so actually, I was just talking with the Bain recruiting team earlier this week, mm -hmm. um, and they mentioned that about 40 to 50 percent of the folks that we um, place into Bain end up at offices outside of Boston, New York, New England, uh, which is much higher than a lot of other business schools in New England. They did name them, but I'm not going to because we're supposed to be nice here. Um, but generally speaking, there is a strong track record of SOM students being placed all around the country and also all around the globe. With all these over firms. the globe, yeah. Did um, any of you recruit for more than just consulting? Did you have a parallel path at all? What did that look like? Yeah, absolutely. I, I had a parallel path just because I think it's good to have keep your options open and have a backup plan. So I think the consulting recruiting process lends itself actually to a lot of recruiting process, especially in general management, corporate strategy, internal consulting. Mm -hmm. So I pursued that as well, especially given my background at American Express. I met, I attended like company presentations for Chase, Citibank, uh, Pepsi, all those companies. I met with people and uh, was just lucky that I didn't have to like really go down that route. I was recruiting into tech uh, simultaneously with consulting. Um, very, very similar story. Went to coffee chats and firm presentations with all the big names, Facebook, Google, Amazon, et cetera. Um, one thing I'll mention that's nice about consulting is it tends to recruit a little bit earlier than most other industries. Um, aside from banking, uh, we're the, the earliest industry that recruits. So unless you're trying to recruit into both consulting and banking, um, it's somewhat easier from a time management standpoint, simply because you can do more of the consulting work up front and then meet more of the um, other firms in the later months. Yeah, and my parallel path was um, healthcare tech. And a lot of that started later, like much after um, consulting wrapped up. So it was kind of nice to kind of have an idea of when I would need to start for that, but I didn't really have to make much headway um, because this worked out. What's the most important or challenging thing you have learned during the consulting recruiting process? 
So I think for me, the most challenging thing was recovering smoothly from making mistakes. <laughs> Um, I think a lot of the students that tend to go to business school were sort of used to being smart people, as non-humble as that makes me sound. Um, and so we're generally used to like having a rough sense of what we're doing and oftentimes being right in the way that we approach problems. But when we try new things, it doesn't always work out smoothly. And things that like I thought were really easy, like doing math, if I have to do them in a job interview with hard numbers and talk through every step of what I'm doing, all of a sudden I'm not that great at that. Um, and just, just learning how to be graceful and recover smoothly um, was, was certainly challenging. What did you do to help work on that? Lots of practice. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, many people that I know ask me math questions and make me talk through it with them, just like out of the blue. So I'd be walking down the hall and someone would be like, Nick, what's 28 times 37? I'd be like, oh, well, eight times seven is 56, blah, 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 to get to the right answer. I think kind of related to that, for me, the biggest thing I learned was being adaptable. And a lot of, um, in consulting in the actual job as well as in the interview process, is just how coachable are you and do you maintain your composure when things don't necessarily go the way you're expecting them to? Um, and that's hard to practice, but I think it's just a matter of keeping in mind to, to just be yourself and bring that to the interviews. Because um, a lot of it is about fit and whether that person can work with you. Yeah, I would actually just mostly second exactly what you guys said. <laughs> Great. Um, so um, New Haven is famous for its pizza. <laughs> so yes. everybody has their favorites. I'd love to hear yours. Pretty big on Delenia's. Ooh, good choice. I think I prefer modern over Delenia, but just barely. Oh. They're both excellent. I like Delenia's. I'm biased because I'm vegan, and <laughs> Delenia's is the only place that has vegan pizza. <laughs> they are, it's They're good there. Sure. I've had it. Okay. It's super good. <laughs> Um, well, thank you, everybody, for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, if there's any light, last sort of um, words that you'd like to share with the audience or words of wisdom or what you knew when you were in their seat, um, maybe now's the time to you can run through them. Yeah, sure. yeah so I can start. Um, I think a piece of advice that I wish I had back when I was applying to business schools that's helpful not only in that process but also in applying for jobs is to really make sure that you let who you are in your unique personality mm -hmm. show through, um, which can manifest like in the actual application. It can also manifest in the types of answers that you're going to give in, uh, in the interviews. I think generally speaking, business schools, consulting firms, et cetera, tend to get a lot of highly qualified applicants and like having your story resonate and be mm -hmm. unique and memorable um, is, is valuable for, for, for success. Yeah, I think um, for me, it was a lot about getting to know the school a little bit through the students. So I would, I guess my piece of advice would be to try to do some research, attend. I know SOM does like Boston happy hours and things like that. So just, mm -hmm. just interact with some students, get a feel for what it's like to go here. And I think that's helpful to gather some data points in terms of whether um, this is a right fit for you. Yeah, I would echo what Shruti said. Um, I definitely think you can get a sense of a school just by interacting with the students. And I think the biggest thing that I started doing later in the recruiting process was looking through the website, figuring out what students might be useful for me to chat with and like sending them emails just to say like, hey, Nick, I realize you work in consulting club. I'm interested in consulting. Do you have 20 minutes to talk about that? Mm -hmm. um, and you could tell a lot about a school by how people reply to those emails. Um, I got a lot of folks within an hour saying like, yeah, let's chat. Um, I'm happy to meet over the phone, on campus, whatever. So that was like the biggest thing for me. Yeah, I think all of that helps with identifying um, any uh, tips or exploration exercises in terms of what kind of consulting, what firms are interesting for you, and your just in your overall exploration um, and understanding if they have the same values as you. Um, so as you spoke to the business and society. Um, so how, understanding what that means for the various um, for the various firms is it's going to predicate a lot on the on the research that you do and the networking you do with alumni and current students who are engaged in those firms. So we thank you all so much for joining us today, and we hope to hear from you again soon. Thank you.